When you really psych to get your business or side hustle off the ground, maybe even next to still working your full-time job, it's easy to get sucked into that productivity hamster wheel where you want to spend every waking minute being productive, whether that's brainstorming on the bus, listening to finance podcasts while working out, or watching productivity YouTube videos while eating, next to spending your evenings and weekends on your laptop, obviously. If this sounds familiar, it might still be at the beginning, where you are still full of energy and just the thought of taking it a bit slower is something you don't even want to think about or you might already be feeling the feels of overwhelm stress or plain burnout i've been there and after being productive 24 7 for months burnout both mentally and physically hit me in the face pretty hard earlier this year so i had to take a step back which was not fun and that's why i'm making this video to help you avoid this before it happens or to help you recover if it's already happened to you as well so here are eight habits that have helped me to recover and help my mind and my body to handle stressful intense phases for a healthier more sustainable kind of productivity so burnout is not necessarily something that only comes from working a lot quantitatively but also or maybe even more so from other factors like reward or doing something that actually aligns with your values your abilities or your likings and that's why habit number one is checking in with my intrinsic motivation i.e doing what i like and doing what brings me forward intrinsic motivation is the best motivator there is because when you're intrinsically motivated you are doing the thing that you're doing because just doing the thing makes you happy and not the thought of achieving something by doing this thing and this part is so important when it comes to burnout or to in general the ability to handle stress because if we only do something to get somewhere but that somewhere does not happen or does not happen the way we thought it would happen it is so easy to burn out if we did too much to get there and then don't even get there where we want to get so it really helps to make smart decisions about in which projects you want to put your energy and your time into and to really ask yourself if the thing that you're working on does make you happy even if that sounds a bit cheesy but ask yourself if you're intrinsically motivated if you're actually doing the thing for you and not for anybody else or for what people might think of you for example last year i spent a lot of my time and energy on a social startup which is basically a software as a service for lonely people and i still think the world needs this and i think the product is a pretty good product but i had that feeling even before i started working on that startup that i only want to build it and then get rid of it as soon as possible. And of course, an exit is probably a dream come true for most startup founders, but this feeling was different. It was basically the feeling of, I now know that it was the feeling of, I think that the world needs this, but I don't wanna be working on it. And that in combination with working incredible amounts of hours, I think was a big reason why the burnout happened to me. And in contrast to that, YouTube is something I've been working on for a lot longer and a lot harder and a lot more. And it's not much more rewarding in terms of, you know, money, financial success, that kind of stuff. But still, I'm doing it and I'm happy doing it because it's just so much fun doing it. Even though maybe the, the goal that I'm aiming towards to has not be reached, been reached by me yet, I still enjoy being on that journey, working on that thing that I'm doing here. And that is intrinsic motivation. I just love the doing itself. And that's why I think I have not had YouTube burnout yet. Even though, you know, my YouTube success could be a bit quicker. And if you have a job or a business where you're just in right now and you just have to stick to it, even though you feel like your intrinsic motivation is not really there, I think it's even more important to watch out for the quantitative part and to take enough breaks and to do things like meditation, work-life balance in general, to not let the stress of the work get into your head and suck more energy out of you than it already is time-wise. Habit number two is talking about it. And this is something that was, or still is sometimes, really hard for me because I can be really proud, as many people can be, I guess, especially if you feel like you're failing at something or that you are being too weak or not resilient enough. At least for me, it's hard to be honest about that, especially, but not only if 
I feel like the people around me don't understand the situation that I'm in. And while I do have amazing friends and family that I can always talk to and that are always there for me, which I'm very grateful for, I still kind of struggle to talk about my struggles. And there are two things that help me here. First, I reached out to people in similar situations, aka fellow entrepreneurs, fellow YouTubers, fellow people with that mindset who might have been in that situation that I was in, aka hustling way too much. And second, something that I've been doing for years now, but was once again incredibly helpful during this time was therapy. I've been going to therapy for a pretty long time now and no I don't think it's a bad sign if you go to therapy whether that's a short amount of time or a long amount of time. I'm a big fan of therapy and I hear people say I believe in therapy or I don't believe in therapy where I'm always like first science says it works and second if it works for you just do it because even if you leave out the professional part it's still an objective person who is not in your life but has a very objective view on the things that you tell them who you can talk to you basically pay them for listening to you and of course if you have good friends good family members that's wonderful but having a professional person listen to you and having you know that you can be a thousand percent yourself and this person is not going to judge you for it is really really helpful to get your thoughts and your feelings into perspective and because i'm such a huge fan of therapy i'm beyond happy to introduce you to today's sponsor BetterHelp. BetterHelp is the world's largest therapy service and it's 100% online. With BetterHelp you get access to over 30,000 credentialed therapists and getting started is really easy. You just have to answer a couple of questions about your preferences when it comes to therapy and this way BetterHelp can match you with the right therapist that aligns with those preferences. And then you can talk to your therapist in whatever way you feel comfortable, whether that's by phone, via message or video call. Regardless of whether you have a specific mental health diagnosis like burnout or depression or if you're just having some normal human life struggles therapy with a professional can give you the tools that help you navigate life you can message your therapist anytime and you can always schedule appointments whenever it's convenient for you and also which i think is very important because a therapist client fit is very very important you can always switch therapists if you feel like your therapist is not the best fit for you without any additional charge you'll usually be matched with a therapist within 48 hours so you can get started fast so if that's something you want to try out head over to betterhelp.com slash hanamalu which i will also put in the description and if you use that link you also get a discount of your first month thank you so much to betterhelp for sponsoring today's video habit number three is taking advantage of herbs teas and supplements so stress is something that not only happens in our head even though it sometimes feels like it but also our body because our head our mind and our body are very well connected there are so many herbs and teas made of the, some of these herbs and supplements that can help your mind and body handle stress so much better and I did not expect that effect to be so big and now this might sound a bit esoteric but it's not it's actually proven by science too but also by my experience if that's worth more than you know scientific research because first hot beverages I gave teas just help your body and mind calm down because it's just a really nice feeling to drink something warm. Second, herbs are basically the medicine of nature and there's so many herbs, edible herbs or in the form of teas that help your mind and body calm down. Even more effective are so-called adaptogens which you can take in the form of supplements and these adaptogens help your mind and body adapt to stressful faces and you would think that it does make a difference but it's made me so much calmer it's incredible so you really need to talk to a doctor and get recommendations for supplements like these habit number four is just doing nothing now this is something that might sound weird to you or very natural depending on your mindset i guess but in the phase where i was really burnt out i don't like that term that's why i always you know look so weird when i say it but you know, I was burnt out, especially in the times where I was really burnt out. It was so refreshing to just sometimes sit there, look out the window and just do nothing. Just let my mind do its thing, maybe follow my thoughts, maybe not think about stuff at all, aka okay, meditation, and just be without doing things because there are so many things that we can always get done or so many screens that we can face to be entertained all the time to get that dopamine rush but if you always put stuff in your ears on your eyes your mind never has time to actually process life and this is especially important in stressful phases and this for me at least also included things like podcasts or even music because even though these things can be very relaxing obviously it still keeps your mind or makes your mind even 
busier. So what I started doing is sometimes to just either sit in quiet or take a walk without putting music or podcasts in my ears. And that has helped me a lot to be able to digest things with my mind better. Habit number five is walking everywhere or you know maybe not everywhere but just walk more because first walking can be very meditative especially if you don't put music or podcasts into your ears because you finally have time to think about stuff but also you use your body in a very non-stressful way because for example strength training can be a kind of stress on your body as well but walking is a type of exercise that only helps you regenerate habit number six is watching my blood sugar and this is something that i started looking into over the last year when i felt that my blood sugar was going crazy here and there and my hormones in general because your blood sugar is connected to your hormones your hormones and your blood sugar is connected to your feelings of stress for example i do intermittent fasting and i am a big fan of intermittent fasting but in phases of stress not eating for a longer period of time especially for women can cause even more stress on your body because fasting tends to release cortisol which is a stress hormone and if your body and mind are already under the influence of a lot of cortisol because you're and a phase of stress, even more cortisol might not be the best idea. So I started to reduce my window of fasting to 12 hours, at least for a phase at the most, and to also include some snacking during the day, which I used to not do, but it helped a lot for my blood sugar levels to not drop too low and with that to avoid cortisol spikes and similar to that focusing on healthy foods that do not spike my blood sugar levels also had a big impact on how calm my mind state habit number seven is doing one thing at a time and this includes stopping to try to multitask because we cannot multitask if you try to multitask your mind basically just has to switch from one task to the next very quickly and that drains a lot of energy second i also stopped doing for example things like being on my phone while watching a netflix show because that is just an overload of impressions and while things like these might feel productive or time saving they drain a lot of energy habit number eight is following routines or having rituals having routines and rituals helps us to first make less decisions decisions and making decisions is energy draining so by having a clear set of actions that you do every morning every evening every lunch break you don't have to make certain decisions so you save up energy and especially because you can include things or rituals that help you reduce your cortisol aka stress hormone levels and two other things that i really recommend you to include in your morning and or night routine is meditation and sleep hygiene meditation helps incredibly to handle stressful situations because you basically train your mind how to let go of things and to not cling to thoughts but to relax which helps during the day but especially if you want to fall asleep which brings me to the second big recommendation sleep sleep is one of the most important if not the most important important thing for regeneration but especially in stressful times so by first giving you enough time to sleep aka getting enough quantity of sleep and second by taking care of your sleep hygiene aka improving your sleep quality is one of the best things you can do for your mental and physical health and if you think you don't have enough time to get enough sleep first take a look at your priorities and second have a look at my video right here where I share eight habits that save me up to two hours every day. Other than that, thank you so much for watching and remember, health is wealth. See you in my next video.